In 2008, Tracy Derrick, well-known documentary photographer and the mother of two young daughters, was diagnosed with breast cancer. This world traveler and free spirit suddenly became her own story and had to face her mortality. Shocked, scared, you know, it's that thing of, it's not happening to me. How can it happen to me? Cancer only happens to other people. It's just incredibly frightening. It's like the big C and nobody talks about it either, especially breast cancer because it's kind of seen as some kind of sexual disease. In what way? Uh, breasts are sexual, um, part of a woman's image. She phoned me up and I felt there was something happening, right? because normally Tracy just speaks, yeah? And there was this kind of, uh, I felt her voice being quite broken and then she's telling me she just got the confirmation from the doctor that it's cancer, yeah? And she was devastated, huh? One in nine women around you will have breast cancer, will either have scarred breasts, lumpy breasts, one breast, no breast. It's actually quite normal. And I think somehow our society needs to get to a point where we start looking at that more normally. Tracy was studying in Cape Town for a postgraduate diploma in fine art when she was diagnosed. Her response was to become her own subject. For years, she'd hidden behind the camera, a talented professional in a safe space. Now she bravely turned the tables, determined to document her changing identity through breast cancer and its treatment. Tracy created an extraordinary visual document, the One in Nine project. Here's One in Nine, this one. Oh, here we go. Look at this. These ones here. Yeah. Look at this. That's with Tess and Amy, and they just happened to have been painting their faces that day. So I was like number one, and I've never thought of myself being a statistic either. And so what I did then is I slowly met other women, and so I met eight other women and I documented them as well. So we made up the group of nine. And that, that was my base, it was, it was my therapy. What was it like to become your own story? That was the most difficult thing to do. Even talking about it now, I find it very difficult. My projects are very intense, very emotional, a part of my life. But then I show people the photographs, and I know the photographs also show me in terms of my relationship with the people. And I think the difference with this is that it's me in front of the camera. Years earlier, to help pay for her university fees, Tracy had in fact been in front of the camera, something she's always tried to hide. I think that was something that she felt very uncomfortable about. She didn't enjoy being photographed, so being a model became a secret. Her physical body was transformed by the cancer. Her identity was challenged very profoundly. If I think of my modeling pictures, they've been hidden away for 30 years in a brown envelope. And it was only after my hair fell out that I showed these pictures to my daughters. My ego needed it at that time to look back and think, OK, Tracy, you did look like that and it was amazing. And it's fine, you've had this journey for 30 years, you've had an amazing journey and life and experiences and mad things. And this is where you are now. This is a black and white negative and this was when I had been diagnosed and I still had my two breasts and I was trying to be with my girls and telling them that I was going to lose a breast. Yeah, I look at that now, and because I didn't know how to photograph it then, and it was only as it grew that I started doing those straight portraits, which I felt were more representative, actually, than this kind of moving yeah. thing. So how did you deal with cancer in relation to your children? Well, I really prepped them, and I prepared them as best as I could. 
we looked up cancer together. I told them the kind of cancer that I have, the kind of treatment that I'm going to have. Tess, her older girlie, was much more conscious of what's going on. It was a real shock to see mum so vulnerable. And Tracy was amazing like that, I must say. She was very open, didn't hide it away. Just dealt with it, I think, very strongly, you know, in, in, in embracing her and saying, well, you know, nobody planned that really, you know, but that's what happens sometimes, yeah. Tracy's a nonconformist who's always responded to life in a natural way. She was faced with hard choices when the cancer struck. She always believed on alternative ways of healing herself, you know, very strongly, but I think at that stage, she actually didn't have a choice. I didn't really know medical people. I mean, I know homeopaths, and, but not surgeons. So what was your leap of faith? Well, I guess my big leap of faith was chemotherapy. Well, first, it was a mistake to me because I'd never had surgery before. And then chemotherapy, because I haven't had antibiotics since high school. My children have never had. Tracy, what was the, the most terrifying moment or a space that you were in in this journey yeah. that if you say, if that through it all, and there are all yeah. sorts of things, was the one. Yeah. I'm curious to know what that was for you. Well, I, th I think it was that moment before chemotherapy. That one where I walked into the Cancer Association in Malmesbury, because that was my most scared moment, because I knew I was going to completely lose control of my body and not know how I was going to be affected by chemo. Just Tracy, what I can, or what for the operation. That's right. Yes, because I saw you before chemo. I was so scared of the chemo. That's right. Yeah. Tracy, as I now hear you to kijk, then I see you my sissy, but you yourself to process this. Yeah. This makes uh, it so a feel in my work. Yeah. The deer clock had been loud, and I had the deer up, but Tracy had it in the I had it on my table. She had come to in the deer, and she had not yet stood, and she had said, I had hope for her. En sy het in trane uitgebaar, sy het haar hande na gesig gesit en sy het verskrikkelijk gehuil. Ek het om die tafel gestap en ek het haar net vastgehou, totdat sy begin bedaar het. Uh, sy het gesê, sy is gediagnoseer met kanker, sy is die enkel ouwe en um, wat gaan nou met haar gebeur? They were so amazing and gave me a CD, um, Coping with Cancer and how you listen to it and how you can reimagine the chemo going into you. Well, um, so that was a huge jump for me to take the chemical route. And I think I did that because I have two small young children and it was just cut it out, poison it out and just do the most I can possible. Tracy had many days in my kantoor in the stop for the chemo. So she had a on the table, she had a crisis on my table. By the time she had with her hond in the stop, and the hond was always in the crisis on the table. By the time she had with her two daughters in the stop. And I think on that stadium was Kansa, and us in Kansa, was for her a levensgordel, you know, a redingsboei where she could fast hold, where she every time, not with the insurance company, it can't be there. Your photographs are the first that I've seen of a chemo bag. The stark reality of cancer. Nobody really speaks about chemo. It is one of the worst experiences that anyone could ever have. And that photograph of like the red bag, that was called the red devil. That's the one that makes your hair fall out. And to sit there and have this red chemical going into your veins and into your body, it got more and more difficult. That hanging red bag just represented all that nausea, that loss of willpower, physical weakness, losing your memory, having no saliva, it kills all your fast living cells. So if you think about that, it's a hectic poison. I just thought then, what am I doing? This is madness. How do people survive this? So if you didn't have children, 
How would your choice have been different? I might have tried a natural route, I think. I would have been too scared to do the chemical route, to lose that control. I think with a natural route, I would have felt more in control of what I was doing to my body. When she was due to have a session, uh, she came in the morning um, from Malmesbury, from her house. I drove her there, yeah. And that was also great for her because as soon as she was here, she could kind of let go of responsibility also. Oh, I can smell the place. Oh. And the Sikh used to tell me afterwards, there's no smell. And I would get back to her place and I said, I can smell the chemo. I couldn't get it out of me because it's in your veins. It's inside your entire body and you cannot get away from it. The amazing thing is what surprised us all, how fast the hair falls out, yeah. This is when, when I said, well, you know, like, what do you think you want to do? And she said, no, let's shave it off. And we made all these different plots and then just made in the beginning decision which one to cut, yeah. And her daughter kind of collected them all, yeah. There was this whole thing of collecting the plots, you know. At that stage, her daughter just wanted to have a normal mother also. There was then the pressure starting a bit, you know, like mum put the wig on, you know, for school also. The wigs became such an important part of our life. They were amazing. I went to the cancer wig bank. <laughs> and the three of us used to dress in them. We photographed ourselves with them. We used to go visit friends in Ribbeck and we would all decide which wig we're going to wear. I went to the girls' sports day and I wore this one. And one of the mothers came up to me and said like, hey Tracy, <laughs> what have you done to your hair? We're like, oh, you've changed your hair. And I just took it off and said, no, this is what is underneath. Tell us the story of your tattoo. I had it done exactly a year after my operation. I had tattoos on my back already. So it felt natural to bring the story forward. Mm. And it made a presence where there was an absence. Why did you decide not to have reconstruction? I don't want a foreign thing. It would be another major operation. And I think it's not important for me to have two breasts. It's like I had two breasts and I breastfed my one child. I just used to swim round and round and round and round and say like, you're gonna get better, Scar. You're gonna get better, you're gonna get better. Tracy's journey was not a solitary one, and in a show of solidarity and care, her daughter's classmates each painted a bag with Tracy's image on it for the Relay for Cancer event held in Malmesbury. This one was from Tess, and then it was incredible. We went to the Relay for Cancer, and they have all these bags lit up at night around the field for all the cancer survivors, people. I mean, I just cried. And then I found these 16 bags with my face on. Oh, it was amazing. Mm. And it was just such an amazing feeling to be alive and to have survived and to recognize everyone else who has had cancer. And to also remember a lot of people haven't survived. Mm. 